We've got another first on the channel today. We're looking at this mains powered LED strip. Mains powered? So you're telling me we don't need a driver and we're going to connect our LED strip directly to 240 volts AC? We certainly are, Gary. That's what we're going to look at. But a room may be familiar to regular viewers to the channel. We've got another innovation from Robus. Now, previously, we looked at the Macau and the Vegas LED strips. Did, yeah. And that's what's lighting us now. We love that product and so did you because the views of that video have been tremendous. But if you haven't seen it, I will leave a link in the description below for that. Today, we're carrying on our casino theme because this is the Atlantic AC LED strip. Atlantic, I'm thinking of water there, Gordon. No casinos in mind. Well, obviously a little bit of casino trivia there. There is the casino town of Atlantic City, New Jersey. Go down the Garden State Parkway, Fantastic beaches and obviously casinos and then again casinos obviously known for lots of fantastic lighting and um, yeah hopefully we've got another great product for you to look at today. Um, we're not gambling with this one from Robus are we? It's 50 metres in length and to put that into perspective we took it down to the local gym obviously I'm not a stranger to a gym and we rolled it out didn't we? We counted those metres as we went and we rolled it and we went all the way up the gym and across and back down almost to get that 50 metres and that is an incredibly long looking length of LED strip and when it was illuminated, it took our breath away, didn't it? Yeah, and just remember, this is from one power supply. Yeah, so that's all you need. Now, to put that in a few London landmark terms, the front of Buckingham Palace okay. is 108 metres. Right. So, power supply at the middle, two strips either side. You could almost light entire line across the entire front of the palace. Pop down to the shard, 300 metres from top to bottom. Again, six reels, you're done. You say 240 volts on the outside, you've picked Buckingham Palace there. I'm probably a little bit nervous with having that voltage there over the 24 or 12 that I'm used to seeing in LED strip. And yet we're quite happily running cables on the outside of buildings. Yeah, true. Yeah. And uh, I'll take you a trip down memory lane. Oh, wow. And you've got a long memory because you go back many years. Yeah. We used to run neon tubes on the outside of buildings. We did. And they were at one or two volts, weren't they? Up to 10,000 volts made of glass. Yeah. Uh, obviously, when we're looking at this product, it's built for the job. It's pretty robust. IKA impact protected. Right. It's a double insulated product, but I guess let's let's have a closer look, Gary, just yeah, to see what it's like. We'll, and so we can see um, the system components. Uh, now we'll go through the system components first, and then we'll look at uh, when it comes to ordering and managing on a project. But here's the uh, the star of the show. So here's the Atlantic uh, LED strip. Uh, so first thing to notice, the cut points are 20 centimetres apart. Okay, oh, is that something we're going to be tackling cutting the strip? So you do buy this from Robust made to the length that you need on the project, because obviously this is mains voltage. If you're uh, if you're not very good with uh, LEDs at 24 volts, things aren't going to improve with uh, with 230 volts. So no, yeah, so let's uh, yeah leave that to robust. But again, it, it is flexible. So lots of LEDs, so quite high density there. We we think there's about 80 LEDs per meter on this. Um, so there's our mains connection there that you have these system components that plug into. So here's the input lead. It's got a high quality HO5 RNF flexible cable on there. That well, robust attach it to the end of the strip and obviously seal that to the IP65 rating. Um, the one thing you can't do with this strip is, is, is sort of try and, if you're going to go around a corner, you, you can't bend it that way. Right, yeah. Um, you have to use the special... Um, We've seen that with the 12 and 24 volts, I mean, people folding it into some sort of, yeah, envelope style cornering. Them. Yeah, so again, remember, so this is, yeah, this is 50 metres of connection, so you don't want to be doubling it back. So what you do do on corners is use these joining strips, which again, I've done the project quite clever, so you can see how they, uh, they plug onto the end of the strip. Yeah, okay, yeah. And then they actually go underneath the circuit board when you make the, uh, oh, wow. the other end of the connection. Again, we're not doing that. We would have ordered it with these already at the right position, weren't we? And what lengths are they? Yeah, so this one, there's obviously there's an end-to-end -end joint. There is a 150 millimeter cable and there's a 300 millimeter cable. Um, so I'm probably thinking this one you might use if you're in a cove and corner, since say, you know, plaster feature in a ceiling to okay. get around a 90 degree bend. Yeah, that makes sense. This one you might use say, if you're on the outside of a building and you need to get around some... Uh, Objects and there's some clips as well here that I can see, and they're hard to see because they're clear, aren't they? Which yeah. makes it brilliant, obviously, when we illuminate it. Yeah, so again, you're putting the clips on. The recommendation is uh, four clips in the first meter and then three clips every meter after that. Now, okay, 
we, we've got a little install, haven't we? We have. We sent Rick to work again, <laughs> don't we? And uh, we've obviously lit, haven't we? The sort of the guttering area down where our EV charger is, nice low down there to give it that subtle light, obviously, as you're reversing your EV car in to make that charging, to see how it goes over time, haven't we? Yeah, so that's probably the best lit gutter in Skipton. Uh, but again, we thought it's an area we could give this a really good test at, say IP65, so it's going to withstand a uh, considerable amount of water yeah. flowing past there, and that's what it's going to get. It's not in the gutter, I must stress it's under the skirt of the building. Um, we thought that's a great little... So it looks, it, it looks beautiful like. at night. I think we've undersold how nice it does actually look in the evenings when we obviously have that on. And IP65, so inside and outside, so the same IP rate in, so it doesn't matter where we're using it, we've got that IP rate. And that's maintained as well, isn't it? Because often you buy IP rated LED strip that you want to use outside and it says the minute you've cut it, you've lost that IP rating, but you don't cut this, do you? Let's reiterate that again. Yeah. You get it to length, don't you? Yeah, so Robos have, have sent us the components and yeah, we've been able to have a, a good play around with the system. Yeah. Uh, but if you're using it and you want to use it on a project, you'd specify the length you want, where you want the joining pieces. Yeah, and you've done two here, haven't you? Yeah. Yes. And, and obviously the, the length. And a a little sneaky one here. I think you've actually joined the lengths together there, haven't you? Yeah, I've used all of the components. Yeah. Uh, again, we found this on the on the cow and the Vegas product, the joining system is fantastic, it is. really well engineered and easy to use. So the people who work in the factory at Robus putting this together assist them. They've got a they've got a great job because this system works really well. But again it's it's obviously that mains voltage. Uh, a few of the things that uh, Rob was pointing out to us in that you may see other uh, LED strips, AC ones, on the market. They've done a lot of work on the EMC. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> obviously, I know what EMC is, but just explain it to the audience. So it's the, it's the uh, yeah, electromagnetic compatibility. So obviously, electronic stuff tends to give off uh, interference. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> so imagine what we've potentially got here is putting a what is a 50 meter aerial along the front of your building. Okay, yeah. Robots have done a lot of work to make sure that complies at all power levels, where possibly some of the other products you see on the market, they may send a meter off to the lab, have a oh, quick test done, okay. and then you end up in a, a bigger problem on site. No so, interference is what you're saying. No interference. It's got its uh, obviously all the, uh, the safety approvals you'd expect uh, marked on there. It's a robust product. We've used it here. We've lit it up, obviously, that 50 meters we did that. And at the same time we did that, I, I was sort of a bit curious about how much power this is taking. So you've strapped it to the outside of the building, 50 meters. It's obviously a deep breath. We know energy prices are a real concern. How much energy did it consume? Yeah, so it's 8.3 watts per meter. Well, it doesn't seem very much. No, and obviously across 50 meters, yeah, you're, you're sort of 400 or 450 watts for the entire reel. Yeah, and that's an, an amazing look of 50 meters of lit LED strips on the outside of a building at only 450 watts. Yeah, and obviously the lumens that go with that is between 840 and 850 lumens per meter. Okay, yeah. 30,000 hour lamp light comes in 3,000 and 4,000 degrees Kelvin with a color rendering of 80. Right. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's good performance. It is double insulated. There's no uh, earth connection or CPC, as Gary <laughs> would call it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, fantastic system. I mean, it's uh, be interesting to get your thoughts in terms of where you may be looking to use this. Absolutely. Yeah, you've got a project coming up. Now you're thinking, hang on, before the length was always an issue and you're trying to put drivers here, there and everywhere. This solves it in a one How many projects have you got with a 50 meter length yeah. or less, is yeah. it? Because you haven't cut the And length. then think of that problem. So if you were trying to do this in low voltage, 50 meters, you know, you've got a drive. OK, you, you can hide that away somewhere. But it's how many times you're going to have to feed that strip at 50 meters. You, you, it'd be very unlikely to be able to feed a 50 meter LED strip right. from one power supply. You'd yes. have to be feeding it intermediate lengths. You would. Intermediate lengths, more connections, more problems, obviously, to potential to fail. Potential to fail. Yeah, you're not going to get all those 24 volts at the end of the 50, potentially, you might one or two at the end, wouldn't you? Yeah, you do get LED strips, obviously, with, with regulators on that yes. help. But again, that, that you're still going to have multiple things. And the cable back to the driver. You know, you drop the drop the voltage, increase the current, big cables, big connections. And if you're a little bit nervous, like maybe I am, about soldering and joining to LED strip, your project comes exactly as you've asked it, with all your joining pieces, and you just connect that to a main supply. That seems incredibly easy. And you could put a standard switch on it, and you're off and running. Yeah, sounds like it's perfect for gas as well. We actually shot the first part of the video in the springtime when we installed a test of the strip under the skirt of our building here, and it's performed really well. And as the leaves fall around it now, we're in autumn time, something else has changed. You can now buy this strip directly cut to length from approved local electrical wholesalers. I will leave a link in the description so you can get more details about that and find out more about the product. And hopefully we'll see your projects with this Atlantic LED strip very soon.